But the not so good news is that as the report finds, many banks do not yet have the financial muscle to provide enough credit to vigorously support the economic recovery. And what it means is that after having gone through the stage of stabilizing the banking system and then repairing balance sheets, banks now face a new challenge. And that is of adapting the business models to the post-crisis economic and market realities and also to the new regulatory environment. Um, I think it's fair to say that in 2006, nobody saw the um, financial crisis. At the same time, risks are shifting to the shadow banking in the form of rising market and liquidity risks. And if left unaddressed, this risk could compromise stability going forward. Um, this could also lead to uh, the now safer banks taking on more risks. Together, the two factors that I have just signaled the liquidity illusion in markets, and this closer interconnectedness between advanced economies and emerging markets, are factors which will amplify the impact of shocks on asset prices. And if shocks are adverse, this will lead to sharper price falls and more market stress. Such an adverse scenario is something that would take a toll on the economy by hurting wealth and demand, but also, at the limit, could even compromise global financial stability. This chain reaction could be triggered by a variety of shocks, but let me mention the two that I think are most significant. One are geopolitical flare-ups, and the second is a bumpy normalization of US monetary policy. 